to this edition of the Sea Trade Maritime in Conversation series. My name is Emma Howell and I'm a director at Sea Trade Maritime. Today I have the pleasure of talking with Captain Rado Antolibish, PhD, CEO of Dry Docks World in Dubai, UAE. Captain Rado has over three decades of extensive experience in leading maritime projects and port management. Throughout his career, he's focused on strategic and operational excellence to drive innovation and large scale transformation across international ports in Australia, Asia, Europe and the Gulf region. Today, we will dig a little deeper into the Dry Docks World strategy and its focus on the Greek market as we enter Posidonia week. I welcome you, Captain Rado. Thank you very much for your welcome. I am uh, very happy to participate to this conversation and to highlight the importance of Posidonia, but also our presence in uh, Dubai and, of course, global market as the top leading shipyards in the business. So on that note, let's start with my first question today, and that is how important is the Greek market to Dry Docks World? As you know, the Greek shipping is going back to history and actually evidence shows that the shipping in as a trade really started from Greece. From the very initial stages of the dry dock had relations with the Greek market and actually one of the first ships was actually a Greek vessel to dock in our dry docks. So yes, it's extremely important. The Greek ship owners are well and alive and growing. And for us, as a total market in repair and maintenance segment, is actually exceeding uh, some 15%. And if you compare that to European market, that is a good third of European market, considering that we are very diversified shipyards and we manage all type, uh, handle all type of vessels and provide all type A to Z services. Thank you for that. I'd like to dig a little bit deeper into the role that Dry Docks World is playing in the decarbonisation of shipping, which, of course, it remains a very topical part of the conversations that will take place next week. Actually, you know, just on a second thought, I wish to also highlight, if you look into the scale of beyond the percentage, I'm talking about first question Greek market, our statistics show that we exceeded to, to, to repair and maintain over a thousand vessels during the period of, of 40 years plus, actually it's exactly 41 years now. So that's a substantial number. And of course, our colleagues from Greek, our clients from Greek assisting and potential clients are very, very important. And uh, my team uh, will certainly have numerous meetings during Posidonia and we often meet uh, our market clients and our local representative office. But now moving to your second question, uh, I want to structure this question, which in, in my books is not just resurrecting, uh, but has really uh, made its uh, momentum in line with uh, many activities globally to protect our beautiful planet, stop mm -hmm. polluting it, uh, reduce the CO2 levels. And also, we as the part of DP World Group company are one of the leaders in the maritime industry and ports, and of course part of the COP which took place last year in Dubai, as you know, and many other activities to assure that the oceans are cleaned and, 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 and preserved for the generation to come. So in this respect, we have actually three pillars. One is our portfolio of services which is providing not only the newest technology to reduce emissions and to provide vessels with a variety of services, being either water ballast treatment tanks and being scrubbers or refit of engines from the standard classic to LNG or even ammonia, but also other technologies which provide vessels with more core, rather say, energy efficient way of dealing. And that includes a variety of planes, that includes technology to change the bulk, efficiency in the propulsion, propellers, and many other ways which are providing the efficiency in energy consumption and beyond that. That's the first pillar. The second pillar is 
the pillar of how we as the company, and we are a huge company as such, Dry Dock is located in the center, in the heart of Dubai. If you look on the ocean on our left, is one of the top resources called Nikki Beach. Behind us is residential, and just a mile and a half away is the Burj Khalifa in the center of Dubai. So it's important that our present is environmental friendly. I'll give you a few just uh, highlights of that. We recently discovered that in our aquatorium are living corals. That means that our filters of our dry docks are of the highest standards, which they are to assure that million tons of water, which is pumped out from these largest dry docks, still the, the, the number two is the largest dry dock on earth, uh, doesn't pollute the water and the water is completely cleaned. So that's the evidence of it. We just last year managed to reduce our CO2 emission from uh, connecting to the largest solar panel electric grid in Dubai, which opened last year, by 57%. So that's incredible step forward. And mm. in addition today, new technologies as hydro blasting, replacing grid and uh, LED lights, but also going beyond that. We are looking also for reducing wastage of our food. So now I'm moving into the third pillar, and the third pillar is basically education. We believe that education is the biggest factor you can put into preserving the earth, into reducing the CO2 emission, because each of us should contribute in many ways. And as I mentioned, the wastage of the food of quantities but beyond a kilo of meat or kilo of vegetables are hundreds, if not thousands liters of water to grow that. So it's all connected. Education is a critical mass, also education, how to use energy, materials, recycling of these materials. So we're going beyond that. And encompass all of it, I'm so happy to inform you that actually one of our very important step forward is that we are now an EPC company, which means engineering, design, procurement design and construction. In the years gone by, for the first 40 years, we were just a construction company and we are A to Z construction company providing repair and maintenance, a variety of project services. But now we are in EPC and our direction in EPC and already a lot number of very lucrative contracts and in a way to execute them is actually oil and gas, the new generation which is a flareless, and we done recently completed a vessel called Floating Supply Production of Lodretta Upgrade Atlanta, which has the later generation of energy reduction and also protection of the environment. Basically, these are the floating uh, refineries which connect to mm. underwater drills and then pump the oil or gas that is refined, water reduced, and all this refinement is then done in a way that is not polluting the water, assuring that, and there is no flare, so there is no burning gas in the air. Very interesting technology, workable technology, so we are one of the pioneers to deliver that to our clients, in this case, instant operator. But we went also beyond that. Our second division of that is the renewable. I'm pleased to say that we have done a number of high-voltage DC and AC boxes. I call them boxes. But they are big converters from the windmill offshore. Uh, why offshore? Because windmills offshore are actually working 24 hours because the wind change to the time of uh, to the day depend on the temperatures. Uh, you have water, which could be ocean, which could be warmer or cooler, and then air, which could be warmer and cooler. And that it provides the continuous wind, which is very efficient. And this is then connected with the cables to this huge boxes of 100 by 60 by 30 or by 40 meters, whereby the energy, windmill energy, is converted in a high voltage, direct current or alternative current to the grid, directly to the grid, providing uh, the generation which we've done in the past is for around 800 to a million households. So we're talking here 5 million people for a city. And we have now negotiating to get number of uh, two gigawatt, which means providing the household of one and a half to 1.7 million people. Uh, we are very proud of that because we are not just with our services to repair and maintenance and project, but we are doing now 
with EPC, uh, this huge renewable project providing us uh, with, with, the, with the product. Uh, of course, the product is, is technology designed by Tenant or General Electric or, or Siemens or Hitachi. So these are the major players. Uh, and we are partners with most of them. And this is our going forward, one of the pillars of our services. So I hope uh, this gives you some clarity what we do in this specter of business. Incredibly interesting. And would, is this something that um, you will also be talking about when the team is at Posidonia? Is that a part of the business that you want to increase awareness about whilst you're in Athens? Indeed, uh, this would be one of the topics, but uh, to just give you uh, in, in uh, not necessarily in order of importance, we will be highlighting our one-stop service A to Z for repair and maintenance. This is our core uh, bread and butter service. And most of our Greek car lines are looking for repair and maintenance of the vessels uh, trading in this area. We believe in long-term relation with our clients. Uh, so we are selling a long-term relation in sense that provide repair and maintenance. So they can plan the vessels. They know when the class is coming or something happened so that we can assure the uh, berthing on arrival, docking on arrival, and fasten over of the vessels and provide everything they need. To do that, we also have global offshore services. These are experts, people of all trades, which they can come on board the vessel or in the ports to do the diagnostic 3D and to see what needs to be done, to do some estimation. And then we can prefabricate certain elements before the vessel comes to, to be more efficient in all respects. So this is one of the promotion we are going to do. The second one will be, of course, uh, telling what are we doing in investment. Uh, uh, we are today a company, and I'm pleased to inform you, over 11 thousand people full-time employees we are the largest uh, facility shipyard facility on earth with such number of full-time employees this is very important because this provide you stability by retaining know-how skill set in our industry as many other marine industry these skill sets are disappearing technology is speaking up but not as fast and we must retain the skill set we must train people to be diverse we must align people with the highest safety health standards, and I will highlight something on safety in a moment after this, to assure that the service, scope of services is retained, maintained, and also the economy in class of delivery. Uh, one might say that this is not the wisest approach for financial issue when you have a crisis, but we believe that retaining this number and growing is critical as we as a company are growing and moving forward. The third item will be, of course, other services, including EPC, what I just mentioned. Very important to say because EPC is uh, very important. Also, there is a potential for the new clients in Greece who wants to build some uh, LNG special barges, which is the highest environmental standard, to provide that for the uh, small power station in the islands, which means LNG is much cleaner than diesel, still reduces the CO2. It's not the best solution, but it's one of the better solutions. And today, technology is actually such that consumption is less for the same kilowatt per use. And of course, we will also talk about uh, our little shipyard, which we resurrected in Montenegro called Adriatic 42. This was one of the good shipyards in day gone by in ex Yugoslavia after the uh, let's call it national war, the succession of these countries. Montenegro is one of the very small countries in the south of Adriatic, the most southern beautiful uh, lagoon, uh, whereby uh, known for the super yachts and the cruisers to visit during the summertime between May and end of October. Uh, and the shipyard is specialized, dedicated for the repair and maintenance and fit of the super yachts and also to provide services to cruise liner, but it's not restricted in phase two. We completed phase one, so we're operational for any other services, which is not impacting on the environment. So Montenegro, as the most southern fjord, I should say, is very, very tough when it comes to environment. So our standards there are very, very high standards to assure that we uh, are not impacting anything to the environment. 
And of course, we will be very proactive to also learn about technologies, learn about our, I call them partners, I don't call them competitors, very strange maybe. I do believe that competition should work, competition is healthy, and I do believe the competition should, actually we should look into what the competition is doing in that technology and align with technology. We have a number of partners all across the globe, which we are, one of my colleagues, competitors, not just from the technology, but like Hitachi, who has also shipyards, MAN, the biggest producer of the engines, and number of even Chinese shipyards. We are looking how we could partner in sense of providing and supporting each other because the business is buoyant and the business is mm. growing and technology is, is moving fast. So we need to be very active to provide the adequate services to our end users, to our clients. Shimrada, you talked about stability by retaining skill set. One of my questions was, um, do you expect an increase in vessel upgrade work as companies look to improve vessel performance to meet those regulatory demands? So by retaining that skill set presumably requires upskilling. How does Dry Docks World deal with that what seems to be global challenge now of making sure that everybody within the industry is kept abreast of new technology but also is able to understand and work within those parameters faced by introducing that on board the ships as well this is a very good question see uh, i would answer this in a, in, a, in a segmented way first of all uh, yes, the demand is rising. Yes, there are there are IMO conventions, SOLAS conventions, and regulatory issue, which the time is running fast, as it was regarding the, the water ballast treatment tank, which still number of vessels, thousands of vessels don't have implemented, and there is still demand to do that. There is a scrubber which is open and closed, which was not so popular, in particular not the open one. The closed system is rather expensive, so number majority of the shipping line choose to not implement that but use the less uh, more efficient fuel and basically utilize the vessels to the moment when they either will convert the engines from diesel to lng or something else or will build uh, all the new builds so we see now quite a number of requests for the conversion uh, we also see a lot of interesting parties to increase the electric generators power for B to be able to connect to the shore power while the vessels are in the ports. This is upcoming in the next years. The vessel in uh, stay during the port operations. They need to uh, connect to the shore power, not to use the diesel generators to reduce the pollution. Of course, this will be also a stream of uh, revenue for ports. Uh, and uh, we see that is increasing. And then also, even to bigger extent, we see demand for the uh, upgrade of the vessel's propulsion, which means propellers, which means changing of the bulb, improving uh, using less traction paints and other ways to reduce the energy requirement or consumption for the same speed. So yes, we are prepared for that. Uh, our labor is trained for that. We have partners who deliver the product and we have know-how and yes, demand is increasing. You just touched on your recent announcement about major upgrades to your propeller repair capabilities. Question around that is how does this improve the company's service to ship owners? Presumably that's made the ship owners um, certainly feel more content with being able to work with you. Every vessel has propeller propulsion. That's yeah. the start. Propellers are exposed. They need to work. They need to work efficiently. And, you know, sometimes they can hit in a ocean. There are containers. There are things. Or even uh, navigating to certain waters, the propellers get damaged. The propellers get realigned. So we traditionally have all kinds of services to provide to propellers. But as the industry evolves and technology uh, comes in, we actually have now uh, realized, so we realized some time, a uh, long time ago, but we are now able to really uh, get the top quality engineers, mechanics, experts in the propellers and the propulsion, 
and equip ourselves with, uh, with equipment which can do a proper testing, a simulation, and uh, assure that the services will provide alignment and assure that the propellers which tested and maybe not even on the books to be repaired at the time, but when a vessel is docked, we can provide the services. And through the diagnostic, we can see that the repeller actually will have an issue in perhaps the next thousand hours or 300 hours. And we can communicate this to the owners or to the management company and say, look, your propeller is okay, but it has some damage, which will, or some deviation or deflection, which will affect its efficiency in the next two, 300 hours. We can easily fix this now, but if you don't do this now in a year time, you have a major issue might change, you need to change full propeller. So this is very important because it's a preventive service and, and provides much needed services to our clients. Uh, we are very unique on that. I believe that a number of other shipyards are following on that. But critical mass for that is not just technology, it's to having know-how people who are capable to use this technology, but also have a traditional knowledge of how to fix these propellers and in a, in, a, in a fast way. So we have a great team. We boosted that with technology, and this is now one of the, as I said, A to Z services we provide for repair and maintenance. Excellent. This time last year, Dry Docks World celebrated its 40th anniversary and also announced its 20,000th maritime project milestone. Has 2024 lived up to the hope and expectation you thought it would? Well, I need to I need to highlight something that we are not a static company. Since uh, DP World took over and I'm part of DP World, my team, our objective as for us to have a master business plan for the next 25 years. It was approved by the board. All the five strategic pillars have been implemented, and one of that you heard is EPC. One is yeah. offshoring, one other you heard critical is retention of, of talent, diversification, uh, multi-skill talent. Uh, the other is our infrastructure, superstructure to be boosted and to actually in the next 10 years, we should double our capacity in the same footprint, how this is possible. We have already the plan and it's called Action Master Plan 24-2033. It's under, under finalization, uh, actually has been finalized as we talk, and is coming to the board. This will give us all the milestones, all these pillars, how to do who are, which are already implemented, how to enhance them, uh, and actually uh, what investment we require and who, who, uh, who can do that, and how this will be done, how will be the impact, including to the uh, business transformation or IT technology, which we had embraced and we are actually launching the IFS uh, full system by end of this year, which will greatly increase our capa capability uh, management uh, control, which is going to be, move from the post-mortem to the preventive system and online, on time, in real time management that our clients will also have visibility what's happening with the vessels through the cameras, through the GPS, including the financial control and, and uh, Many things, control of our seven, uh, 11,000 strong workforce plus 6,000 contractors. Today, we are actually this morning employing 17,120 people on the field. Uh, this is throughout the day with, with two extended shifts. So this is false to reckon. And since I'm talking about the people, very important to highlight that last year we finished 38 million plus working hours of which only one lost time injury, small last time injury, not a serious injury, not a fatality, and no environmental issue. This is this is a result of what I'm telling, having a great workforce, which who adheres to high safety health environment standards, who work as one team, well planned, when monitored, well, well guided, uh, and not only trained in safety health environment, also how to use the tools, how to efficiently deliver, and I'm also uh, pleased to say that, that our client satisfaction is in high rates. Our reliability of equipment is in high 90s. Delivering times is also in, in a 90%, which is incredible res uh, results. And I actually wish to use this moment to, to take my, my team, my management, my uh, middle management, of course, uh, most important, our labor, and also our contractors who have delivered their efforts in day in, day out, 
in these 38 plus million hours. This year, to answer your question, is continuation, actually in a way even stronger, uh, but we have to position ourselves in the market. The repair and maintenance is always a bit flotating up and down. Maybe you have less rigs, but you have more certain other vessels, but we are diversifying mm -hmm. there on the project, very robust, and EPC extremely robust. I'm here actually in Europe to close number of contracts, long-term contracts, which are for the duration of five years. And I'm very, very pleased how we have a change and provided the future, sustainable future growth in all aspects to our facility. And actually have now with EPC, we have actually global footprint without mm. need to be physically present. This is about engineering. Captain Rado, I read in your biography that you're an accomplished sportsman um, and that, in fact, you represented Yugoslavia Olympic Reserve Team at the 1980 Olympic Games. How on earth do you balance your leadership with sports? And do you get an opportunity to have any downtime with all these plans that you've been talking about? Well, you know, I was a very young man at the time. But you make me feel old now. I'm not old. Thank you very much <laughs> for your compliment. I'm actually proud, but I'm humbly proud because, you know, there have been a number of sportsmen. I was only a reserve, though I did compete. I give an example. My wife, she is a, an accomplished Olympian in swimming. Uh, she was also for Serbia, uh, and she was very, very good. She still holds a record under 15 years. So, yeah, I always look, uh, when I have done something good, look upon somebody who is better. Uh, but this gives you something which I believe is very valuable. It gives you the discipline, you know, yeah. to become a master of something and to be a top uh, sportsman or top achievement in any field. You need to put 10,000 hours. I'm, I'm quoting Leonardo da Vinci here. You want to be a master, you need to put 10,000 hours, but these hours should be focused. You need to be present when you do something and you need to do it with your heart. So when you do that, then you will become a master of that field. And then of course you need to retain it. I have time. I am doing what I'm doing with my heart. I am uh, privileged to have such a great team. I am privileged to be in Dubai representing DP World in, for the dry dock as the CEO. I am excited to see the results of our work when you see the vessel being repaired or the project being built and the project being delivering what is supposed to deliver, it actually makes you proud. So you have left something behind you, which will be used for generation to come. And when you actually can educate or actually take the best out of the people, that is the biggest achievement. So I do believe in people. I firmly believe in people managing properly, showing them, walking the talk, being a leader, and I do spend once a week when I'm in that time to go around facility, to meet people, to see people, to see what's going on. And that is cascaded down to all my direct reports and everybody, regardless the function, the department, we need to be present. And that also echoes during the COVID. We were the only shipyard. And you can check that who were open 24 seven, never closed, mm. regardless of the impact, which was difficult. And we showed the leadership. Our, uh, my team and myself, we were present regardless. And I think that has really strengthened our team too. They see that we are not just, you know, off people in the office, but we are leaders who have not been removed ourselves for the reality of day to day hard work. And that's appreciated. That's a human nature. Thank you. Thank you, Captain Rodo, for your time today. It's been an absolutely fascinating conversation and an absolute pleasure to speak with you. Thank you. Mm -hmm.